Okay, so uh, I work at the Committee on Climate Change. Uh, for those of you that haven't come across us, we are the independent official advisors to the government on how to decarbonise. And my job for the past seven years at the CCC has been to advise the government on how to cut the UK's emissions by 80% by 2050. And that has been a legally binding target that we've had in place since back in 2008 when the Climate Change Act was introduced. Now, this year, that all changed. And the reason it all changed is that we were asked to look at how we could go further and how we could get all the way down to net zero emissions. And following our advice, as you may have seen, the government has set a new legally binding target. Is this on? Yes, I think it is. The government has set a new legally binding target. There is a little nearer. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it closer. Bring it up. Thank you. Bring it up. Yes, thank you. I don't want to, so if I do That's that, right. it will, uh, it will uh, make the sound a little bit less clear. So, mm -hmm. so it's a balancing act, you see. Yeah. So, um, following our advice, the government has set a new legally binding target for net zero emissions by 2050. And I have just under seven minutes now to explain to you what does net zero mean, firstly. Two, how hard is it? And three, how easy is it for Oxford to go faster? So this is going to be an absolute whistle-stop tour, but the good news is there's lots of time for questions afterwards, so do please uh, feel free to come up to me and ask me lots of questions. Very quickly then, what does net zero greenhouse gas emissions mean? Well, quite simply, it means that all emissions that arise from burning fossil fuels in the economy or land use change, cutting down trees, have to be counterbalanced on a like-for-like -like basis by things that draw emissions out of the atmosphere and store them long term. So obviously, planting huge numbers of trees is, is incredibly important, um, but there are other things that we can look at also. Now, there are essentially two things that we can do in order to completely decarbonise the UK's emissions. The first is to radically overhaul all the fossil fuel infrastructure. And the second is to change our behaviours, so to fly less and to eat less meat. What I'm going to do on this slide is give you a very high level flavour of what we think you need to do to completely change the UK's infrastructure. And I'm going to leave it to you to make up your mind as to how hard you think that then is. So there's a brilliant news story in terms of renewable electricity supply. We currently have 50% of renewable electricity, uh, sorry, 50% of electricity supplied by renewables in this country. And to get to net zero, we know that you have to double it to 100%. But also, we have to look at energy use throughout the economy. So we know that we can't carry on using petrol and diesel cars. We know that we can't carry on using natural gas to heat our homes. And obviously, we have to look at emissions from industry and, and other areas of transport as well. So we think that if you quadruple the amount of low carbon electricity supply, that gets you really quite far in terms of decarbonising a lot of those other emissions throughout the economy. However, it's not enough because there are areas that you can't electrify. And so what we then look at doing is using something like low carbon hydrogen to get to those really tricky emissions in heavy industry, heavy transport, and potentially other areas of the economy too. Mm -hmm. However, that is still not enough, because if we are serious about keeping industry in the UK and not just shutting it down and, and moving it abroad, then we have to look at how we can capture some of the CO2 from industry, um, from things like uh, process emissions, where you can't simply switch over to electricity and hydrogen. And that is still not enough because there are some really tricky areas such as aviation and, and agriculture where we currently don't have all the solutions. So we know that even with all of those things in place, we're likely to still have emissions in 2050 which need to then be counterbalanced by things that draw down CO2 from the atmosphere. And the main thing um, that I think everyone agrees on there is the value in uh, planting huge uh, numbers of trees. So we're looking at 
basically increasing the forest cover in the UK from 13% to up to 19%. And we think that you can do that by uh, planting five times as many trees as we currently do every year between now and 2050. So how hard is it to go faster? Well, on the infrastructure side, it's really quite challenging. Um, if we come back to one of my favorite topics, which is how you decarbonize buildings, um, then we can electrify using high efficiency heat pumps, but we only sell 20,000 of those every year at the moment, and we need to get that to around 2 million. So you need to uh, basically equip a lot of people with the skills in order to do that, and you need to do something like ban gas boilers. So I've mentioned also low carbon UK industry, and you know, quite simply, when you plant trees, it takes up to 30 years for them to reach uh, maturity and sequester all the potential CO2. So those are the things that I think make it quite hard, but there are areas we could go faster, and there are really important contributions we can make, such as flying less, and also eating less meat, which has a big impact. So, last question, how hard is it for Oxford to go faster? Well, the good news is that there are a range of things that make it easier for Oxford to go faster. So if we come back to some of those really difficult sources of emissions, like aviation, the heavy industry, and uh, agriculture, then actually those wouldn't be included in an Oxford City target, so that does make things easier. However, on the other side, you know, I've talked a lot about infrastructure, and clearly um, there are limits to how much faster you can go at city level if uh, there are big pieces of infrastructure that are going in at a national level. So to an extent, progress at a city level is tied to progress at a national level. There are three areas that I'd like to quickly pick up on that I think are, are worth mentioning. So, first of all, electric vehicles. Now, there's a brilliant story here, which is that we are now confident that it will be cheaper to buy and run electric vehicles than it is to buy and run our current petrol and diesel vehicles. So, it's not a case of whether or not we go down the route of electric vehicles. It's just a question of when. Um, do we stop selling uh, petrol and diesel cars in 2035, we do it in 2030, and that really depends on how fast we can roll out electric charging rates up and down the country. So that is a brilliant area where if you wanted to as a city, you could go faster. Now another really positive story is around uh, renewable electricity. Now offshore wind costs have come down so fast that we we basically now think that they won't need any subsidy within four years. And that has completely blown uh, all expectations out of the water. Um, so there's a really positive story here. Um, it means that not only do we think that we can basically quadruple electricity supply, um, a renewable electricity supply, and do that within the next 10, 15 years, but that it's going to be much cheaper than we previously thought. So, brilliant new story, but also one to think about for Oxford, does it make sense for you to concentrate on renewable electricity if we're already doing quite well at a national level? Or could, could you focus on other areas where you can have more impact? And last one, so again, close to my heart, my pitch to you, essentially, is that a really important and fantastic area you can focus is uh, your buildings. So our buildings in the UK aren't fit for purpose currently. Um, they are incredibly leaky, much leakier than uh, buildings across Europe on average. And uh, we have huge problems with uh, vulnerable people who can't afford to heat their homes. Um, and so there's a really brilliant thing we can do by bringing our, our building stock um, up to scratch. And that will save bills and it will uh, help uh, to fight climate change. Um, but also it can, it can do something really fabulous, which is uh, reduce the impact on the NHS. And one, one last thought to leave you with is that the, the cost of poor housing to, in England alone is currently around two billion a year for the NHS. So this is a, a really fantastic area that you could focus on. Thank you very much.